Hello, good populace, and welcome to another exciting episode of Ask the Night Live, where we ask uh, very interesting nights, very interesting questions, and try to grab that shovel and dig into their brains and find out what makes a night tick. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to uh, thank our patrons over at patreon.com. And uh, of course, I'd like to thank uh, FN, our tech guy, and Nora in the background. Thank you so much for helping out. And uh, I suppose let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's introduce our uh, our first guest. Um, I, I guess just the most greatest, amazing person in the world. Uh, His Grace, Duke Sir James the Holy. Hey, how's it going, man? How's it going? It is so great to have you on the show. And uh, I gotta say, before uh, before we bring on our next guest, uh, my my wife absolutely loves you. She follows you on TikTok. She thinks you're hilarious, um, and she's just a huge fan of yours. And I appreciate I know that. I'm, I'm definitely throwing her under the bus because she she said this to me before the show. And she's like, "Don't actually tell him that." And I'm like. Of course, I'm going to tell him that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> and of course, our uh, our second guest, uh, Sir Carson. I got a night. How's it going? How's it going? It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> it's pretty cold up here too. We still have about six inches of snow on the floor. Holy shit, boss. <laughs> <laughs> As it's been snowing all week, there's nothing we can do about it. So, but uh, so uh, first things first, let's start off with what's your name, where you're from, how long have you been a knight, and uh, let's let's start with uh, right here, uh, Duke. Oh, okay, right here. There we go. <laughs> um, yes, I'm um, I'm uh, Duke James the Holy. Uh, Duke James the Strange called the Holy Serpent of Wolfline. Yada yada yada, a bunch of other bullshit. Um, I was knighted in 2009 in Glenavon, and that's where I reside even to this day. So yeah. Uh, I'm Sir Carson Wynn, uh, from Louisiana, uh, Glenavon. Been here since before we were on album with Michael Romerier starting, it was 89, started playing. Uh, His Grace James and, uh, knighted me, I guess it was six years ago. Um, and uh, it's a great place to grow up. All right. So you were hit, you were James's squire? No. Or are no, you no, James was the elevation. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so uh, let's start with uh, Sir Carson on our first question. Uh, what was your personal philosophy or path on training before you were knighted? So we had a figure that was a great, bit larger than life while I was growing up in the SCA, uh, Sir Francois Devant, Flower of Chivalry. And uh, he had mentioned, he had a saying he said a few times to me, and it stuck with me all throughout my my. my my early training, it was, you want to be a knight, act like a knight, dress like a knight, fight like a knight. Eventually, somebody's going to call you a knight. And I've kind of stuck with that my whole you know, my whole career is just do what you think needs to be done and it'll happen. All right. All right. Look good, feel good, act good kind of thing. I like that. Your so, um, you know, knightly behavior is kind of weird. So, like, I, uh, I got knighted very fast in the SCA. So, you know, like, uh, I figure, you know, just try to be a decent human, swing a stick really good, and you get to be a rock star. You know, that, that was kind of my philosophy, yeah. and that's kind of what I did. You know, so I tried to not be a fucking shit heel. Um, I swung a stick moderately okay, and they knighted me. And I try not to be a shit heel to this day. So, yeah. All right. Short, sweet, to the point. I like it. Yeah. So our next question, we'll start with you, Your Grace. Uh, what do you think was your biggest hurdle as an unbelt? Um, you know, like I had a lot of shit to overcome, right? Um, so I my my intro to the SCA was a little weird. I uh, I was working at a strip club over in Duluth, Alabama, that was owned by Merle Haggard and Conway Twitty called Show Me the Twitties. Were you a dancer? Um, yeah. And, you know, like, <laughs> so I had a lot of inhibitions. Um, 
or I didn't have a lot of inhibitions rather. So like I, I, my intro to the SCA was, was through that. Like I, uh, you know, Mondays and Tuesday nights when I was, uh, you know, I bounced normally during the week, Mondays and Tuesday nights was like male review nights. I would get out and I, would, I was an exotic dancer for those nights. Oh. And yeah. And, um, so like one night it was a Sunday night and uh, I, I remember clearly Carol Ransom got in a fight with uh, a woman named Charlene Bigsy. Um, and I broke up the fight and then immediately started grinding on the guy that was on the main stage, Dastily Dark Fury, um, which, you know, a little male on male. He was a Nigerian fucking specimen, too. So a little interracial male grinding, uh, a little forbidden. Uh, action in those parts of Duluth, Alabama, but we did it. We brought the house down uh, as LaGrange started playing and, um, you know, broke up the fight, pleased all the women, made a lot of fucking money. Later on that night, uh, on the way home, uh, saw a van that was broke down, tried to be the decent human thing, helped him out, realized that the people in the van were coming home from an event. They didn't realize it was male review night. They stopped by to have some drinks, watch some women, and in that van was John the Bear Killer, who introduced me to the SCA. So I kind of came in with like a very weird um, <laughs> idea of how the SCA worked because he was like, hey, man, I saw uh, I saw your action tonight. And I'm like, well, I don't really swing that way. It was just, you know, trying to make some money. Um, but he uh, he was like, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I guess, you know, just coming in the SCA in, that, in, in kind of a weird way. You know, my biggest hurdle was not really understanding how the SCA worked. I had a different perspective on things. So getting the buy-in was a little different for me. Um, but once I got the buy-in, once I kind of understood it, you know, I loved it. So, yeah. From the pole to the stick, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right, Sir Carson, go for it. <laughs> um, I, had a, I had a multitude of hurdles to get over. Um, personal confidence was probably the hardest to overcome. That's a a a challenge and stumble block, stumbling block for a lot of people. And um, my best friend at the time, who I got into the SCA with, um, some of y'all may have know, may know the name Ashikage Hiramoto. He um, mm -hmm. he was a natural athlete, and he excelled at this game early on, and. So I kind of, I don't want to say grew up in his shadow, but I was overshadowed by him whenever, because we always went to the same event. So if we went to the event, he was getting the recognition, not me. Um, and then and then on top of that, I kind of sucked um, for about 15 years. Um, and then at some point during there, my previous wife decided she didn't like the idea of the SCA. So I had to drop out for a while. And... Getting back in, I discovered that I don't have to fight like somebody else. I can fight like me, and I can be successful at it. And things just kind of fell into place after that. And next thing I know, James is giving me his chain and shit. So, all right, what's that term? Um, oh, I'm looking for that term. Anora, help me out. What's that term? Oh my gosh, it was it's such it's been such a topic. Uh you said you had the problem with it. We've had so many nights that have had the same issue. Imposter syndrome? Yes, thank you. Gosh, yeah. I can never remember that. Yes. It's a yeah. real thing. I, I know I know so many people that have the same the, the same issue. It's just the idea of just not not having it. You're you're always your own worst critic. So yeah. Uh, until true. somebody gives you that validation that you can't give yourself, you're going to believe that. Yeah. Well, and you should be your own worst critic, right? I like that, that's, yeah, you should be. Yeah. I'd like somebody else to be my worst critic once in a while. Um, so I guess this is for, uh, the, I think, I believe this is for uh, Sir Carson. And, um, da, da, da. Aside from fighting, what is your greatest love in the SEA? Wow. That's, that's, that's going to be hard to narrow down. I mean, the pageantry is amazing. The camaraderie, the, the pomp and ceremony, the it's all it all adds to the, the the overall flavor of an event and just the immersion into that time and being able to be better than your mundane self on a day on a, on a, a 
weekly, monthly basis is incredible. But um, when you help someone who didn't think that they were of your notice, you know, some people, like I said, everybody's got imposter syndrome at some point. So when you let somebody know that they're making an impact upon your life, they're inspiring you in your game, um, being able to offer that validation to somebody else down the, you know, the pay it forward, so to speak. Uh, that is the, that's the best payback of anything I've ever done in my life. It, um, it truly pays for all the gas and all the site fees and et cetera. And the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars we poured into our armor and gear and kits, um, makes it all worthwhile. That's pretty like quality right there. Um, you know, Carson, uh, you know, me and Carson, we talk a lot. Uh, we're good friends. Um, you know, I knighted him. I consider I, I consider him my knight even to this day. He said something to me, and this rings true. Like, when you become a peer, you become an NBC. You are there to help everybody else along. You're there to help their path. You're held there to help them to guide them, um, and that means a lot. Um, and the SCA, the SCA as a whole, like when you love it, when you truly fucking love it, and the people in it, and you find that that special thing, like the world can really fucking suck. The world can, can be a horrible fucking place, but that one thing that you fucking love in the SCA, it can, uh, it can fucking make the world seem a little less, you know, like a horrible place. It can make the world seem a little better. Um, we get to be fucking rock stars from swinging a stick. Pretty okay. And I think that we shouldn't abuse that privilege that we get within the SCA. Um, you know, once once you get the accolade of being a knight, it's your job to pay it back. It's your job to, to pay it forward. It's your job to uh, acknowledge everything that the SCA gives. Um, <laughs> because you get to be, you know, a fucking cool person because you swing a stick pretty good. So. <laughs> yeah, I was a little confused. Are you taking all the fucks out so I can't have any? Yeah. <laughs> I'm up to eight so far, Evan. <laughs> um, honestly, I never really I never really looked at that idea as once you become a knight that you become an NPC. As oh, yeah, you're on staff at that point. And it's not just a knight nice peer. Yeah. I, all the that, peers I, have I, the same role. Never looked at it that way. That's that's a, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Um, so your grace, uh, as a peer. What is something you would change about the game? God damn. <laughs> is there one thing? Um, there's a lot of things I would change about the game. I wish people would understand that um, words mean something. I wish that people would understand that we can't, you know, that the words have fucking weight. Um that we have to be very cautious what we say and how we fucking treat people that, you know, when you claim a leadership role, you have to fulfill that fucking role. Um, th there's a lot I would change. You know, we preach so much about, about courtesy and honor, but you know, when the minute somebody shows fucking weakness, it's like people become sharks in the water. And I hate that about the society. Um, there's a lot of good shining examples of chivalry and courtesy and all that, but as a whole, we fail a lot sometimes. Um, and I wish we could all live to these higher ideals that we preach, you know, and, and that's weighty and I know it's weighty, but man, sometimes, you know, we just fail as humans and I wish we could own that and just strive to be better. I think the easiest answer right now would be to echo James's on this one. Um, I would like to see okay. some of the people change, not necessarily the society. The okay. the traditions of, of what we do are things I would I, I hold on to very strongly. Not all the traditions are great, and I understand some of them are need to change due to the evolution of society, but. There's a reason things are traditions. They they, they, they they harken back to what the SCA was and what it was attracted a lot of people to it. And we shouldn't just turn our backs on those those ideals 
just because they're inconvenient currently. Um, a knight or a pelican or a laurel or strong leadership roles. And um, I don't know. I had some big philosophical things to state here. I've, I've, I'm drawing a blank now. So I'm, James is right. You, people need to change, not the live by the ideals we, we espouse to is what we need to do. All right. Fair enough. Well, speaking of ideals outside of prowess, what is the virtue you look at, uh, you look for the most in a knight? I'm going to pick two because I can and you can't stop me. Um, <laughs> franchise and, and service. Um, okay. Is this person going to better the SCA moving forward? Is this person going to play an active role in keeping the SCA going? And how is this person helping make this society more attractive to newer, newer people? How far are they going to give themselves and their table to make someone else comfortable at an event? Um, those are the things we need to do to keep the society alive. And those are the things that if you're not doing that, you don't deserve a peerage. I don't care how, how great you swing a stick. I don't care how wonderful you, you know, knit or, or, or how well you feast a crack. If you're not helping make people more comfortable, and you're not taking an active role in making keeping the SEA going, you're not a peer. All right. You're great. Um, so like fighting really good, you know, swinging a stick really well, fighting really good, looking the part. That buys your ticket through the fucking door. Yeah. Um, past that. You know, I want to make sure that you're a decent fucking human. If you're some fucking douchebag, you're not going to get in my order. You know, you, you have to be a shepherd to the society. You have to be a shepherd of people. You have to be able to go someplace the SCA doesn't exist and create pure SCA and pure SCA. People that love fucking history and love what we fucking do. Um, you know, swinging a stick is such a minimal part of the peerage uh, you know and i'm not you know I, I don't i'm 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 very much of like all peerages are fucking equal i don't i don't believe that the knights are the first among equals i'm not i i, I view every peerage as a knight of some facet you know you're a knight of service you're a knight of the arts you're a knight of the blade you're, you know and all that so like you know don't be a fucking douchebag don't waste the fucking opportunities you're given by doing something you fucking love, right? When you get through the door from doing this thing you love, don't piss that away. Be a decent human, treat people right, try to promote the SCA and be a shepherd for all the ideals that we preach. That's that's where I'm at with all this. All right, I definitely love that. I know my knight said the exact same thing. He's always talked about. It. He's like, you should really focus on, you know, you should focus on service more and trying to promote yourself and trying to be a decent person and not so much trying to be a great fighter because, you know, when you look at the concept of history, knighthood was so, <laughs> here you go, words of wisdom. Don't be a fucking douchebag. Pretty sure that's in the, uh, pretty sure that's in the Marshall's handbook too. Can't remember what what number rule that is. Uh, if anybody can, uh, if anybody can tell me that one, it's rule number uh, one. That was the rule number one. Don't be a douchebag. Don't, 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 don't be a dick. <laughs> don't be a dick. <laughs> um, but he always talked about the idea that you know to become a knight, you just had to be born royalty, and you they were just kind of giving it to you. Um, yeah. I think we kind of we changed that a little bit in our game specifically, but the idea that you you know within service you are a knight of service within within you know the laurel you're a knight of the laurel you're a knight of the pelican you're a knight of the chivalry so it's it, you're not just you know oh it's just a lore no no no. that is a legit mm -hmm. you know a legit so, keeper situation thing so in a romanticized sense yeah i mean we're trying to we're trying to recreate the romantic side of mm -hmm. everything that it means and within chivalry most knights were more tony soprano than they were fucking percival mm -hmm. but that's not what we're trying to recreate we were trying to create the romanticize the beauty of honor and chivalry and courtesy. And, you know, and again, we fa everybody fails at that. Everybody fails at that. But 
and you're failing, you should look. How did I fail? What did I do wrong? How did I, what misstep did I take? What could I do better so that tomorrow when I wake up, I'm a better person than I was today? You know, that's what, that's what the SCA is about, right? And that's what it should be about. It should be about so that, you know, it's, it's all about self-improvement. There, and there's so many facets to what we do, but it all right. should be about living to these tenets that we preach opposed to just kind of using them as fucking guidelines. No, they're not. Like if we, if we want to be a peer, if we want to exist in a society, we should live to these ideas because we get to be fucking rock stars because we do things kind of fucking okay. Don't piss that away. You know, like it's so fucking easy, but but we fail constantly at it. So in regards to that, uh, starting with your grace, uh, what does franchise mean to you and how do you define it within the society? Franchise is one of the things I've, I have a I have a huge problem with. Um, OK. Franchise to me is everything that encompasses chivalry in the SCA. You know, it's, it is the all encompassing factor of the peerage. Um, it should be the one virtue that we fail at the most, but it should be the one virtue that we strive at at all times. Um, you know, I, 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 fa I fail as a knight fucking every day, every day I fail as a knight. I, I fail as a Duke. I fail as a Pelican. I fail all the fucking time. I misstep. I get angry. I I say things that I shouldn't say. But, you know, I also always try to reflect on those things. And I, I look at, like, how does this affect the newer generation? How does this affect new people? Does this bring people up? Does this, you know, I'm, I'm you know, it, one of my one of my things I preach is, you know, if all hands bringing the tide all ships rise am i doing that am i am i am i helping everybody to rise up um and if i'm not doing that then i'm failing at franchise and i feel that's the same for everybody if they're not trying to help everybody rise up then they're then they're failing at franchise that that to me is what franchise is it's it's the all-encompassing factor of what it means to be a peer uh, Garrison Martin here said the struggle to live up to nightly ideals is the most historical thing we do, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. I, oh, yeah. I mean, it is. It is. The, the ideas that we live by, you know, I, the, <laughs> the the fealty I swore was the fealty of Charlemagne. Um, and it's, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, it's impossible to live up to, and it should be impossible to live up to ideas. It should be hard. Fealty should not be easy. The road that we have should not be easy. It should be a fucking struggle. It should be that every day that we wake up and that we participate in this hobby, that we're like, hey, man, I kind of fucked up, but I can be better. I can be better at this one thing. Um, but it shouldn't be so overwhelming, too, that you just feel this fucking burden that you can't fulfill. You know, it's, it's a struggle and it should be a struggle. All right. Sir Carson. Uh, what does franchise mean to you? I'm actually really curious about this because I, I knew you just you just touched on franchise on the last question when we were talking about prowess. So. All right, so um, I find it hard to define any of the nightly virtues. Uh, they're all very esoteric, and it's easier to give examples than it is to give a definition. Um, when you show up to an event and there's a Woman struggling to get into the top bunk of the cabin. You've got a bottom bunk. Give her your bed. Make it easier for her. Make her, give her that extra little bit of let, uh, letting her know that her comfort is important as, as is important as yours. Helping women carry their stuff from the car to the, the field. Um, grabbing the the, the the ice chest of, uh, of water for bringing down the field so that somebody else doesn't have to do it. All the little things you do to help others have a good day. The, 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 Boy Scouts, that's franchise. The stuff you do to, to get your merit badges, the, you know, the, that's the kind of stuff we need to be doing on a daily basis. Um, James is right, though. You, you, we're going to fail. And acknowledging that somebody's going to fail and giving them your forgiveness is also franchise. Um, learning that 
people are going to make mistakes. Give them another chance to make it right before you pass judgment. Those are all examples of fran a, fan a franchise that, that are sadly missing a lot of our, our interactions with. So, um, all right. like I said, I think most of the nightly virtues are aspects of the definition of, of chivalry. They're all part of the definition of chivalry, but none of them truly encompass it in totally. It's the, it's the combination of all of them together that, that defines the chivalry uh, or defines a knight. So, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I know it when I see it. It's kind of like porn. <laughs> or art, or art, or art. art. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of porn, uh, when considering a candidate for knighthood, Sir Carson, uh, do you consider their age as a factor? Their chrono their chronological age, not so much. Their, their okay. age within the SCA, definitely. Um, okay. That being said, if a fighter's been fighting for 30 years and is just now getting to the point where they're they're, they're, they're being brought up as a candidate, will I give that some thought? Yes. Um, why did it take them 30 years? Are they overcoming some kind of challenge that the, some, the younger fighter who's naturally apt and, and gifted didn't did have to take up? Um, there are reasons to bring it up, but the fact that they're X number of years old does not play into my, my consideration. Okay. It may, it may offer more light into why they're shining in some of the other areas in the, um, you know, of the, of the, of the chivalry, but in and of itself, it doesn't, it doesn't make a factor in my opinion. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm older night too. So just bear that in mind. I'm I'm not like a time in guy. Um, I got knighted in like two and a half years in the SCA. I think when somebody's a knight, they're a knight. Um, you know how old they are. I, I don't give a shit. Like if they're a knight, they're a knight. Like I don't. I, I would love to make younger knights. I think we wait too long on peerage. I think that the average age of our fucking knights should be mid thirties. But if we're not getting those recruits in that are doing you know doing the job and putting the work in, what can we do? You know, I would love to see the, the demographic change so that we're making, you know, people, you know, I, I would love to see a giant pack of 25 year old knights. I think that's the best thing that could happen for the SCA. Um, are those 25 year olds out there, though? That's that's kind of the question. You know, I, I don't know. I don't I don't consider age person's a knight. They're not. I don't care what age you are. If they're 18, if they're 16, if they're four, if they're acting like a knight. Night them, you know, if they're 104, if they're acting like a knight, fucking night them. Uh, you know, that, that's my ability. That, that's my take on it. All right. All right. So uh, we've, uh, we're, we're just a little under that 30 minute mark, but I think we're going to go ahead and start our, uh, our viewer comment uh, questions here. Uh, this one comes from, uh, I'm going to butcher names. So um, sorry, not sorry, because I'm only human. Uh, uh, Jeremiah Mazurk asks, how do you guys uh, try to keep the fun in the SEA? Uh, with that, how do you maintain the fun while on the path to a goal? Uh, I am an idiot and a uh, fucking moron, so I pretty much do what I feel that other people want to do and enjoy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't I – have, I have – my field of fucks is fucking barren. Um, I think that if people are having a good time, let them have a good time. I'm going to try to facilitate that good time for whatever means I can. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah. Let people have fun. Let people have fun. All right. <laughs> Uh, Sir Carson. Um, first of all, that implies that it is still fun. And, you know, if it's not, then you're doing something wrong. The SCA okay. in and of itself is fun. You don't have to keep it being fun. You have to be open to having fun. Uh, 
If you have a sour attitude about things, things aren't going to be fun. That's on you. That's your problem. Don't do that. Um, now, as far as keeping it fun while you know, on the path to a goal, I kind of have an issue if, if you're, you're, you have a goal in mind. That's um, You're looking at the, the destination, not the day at that point. And you're, you're missing everything that's going on around you. Um, Chival- you know, being elevated was never my goal. It was a matter of fact, I, th- I thought it was well beyond my goal. That may have made it easier for me to not have any thoughts about it and just kind of exist in the SEA and take what it brought to me. The SEA is what you, put, you get out of the SEA and you put it into it. positive thoughts and good times into it. It's going to be positive and good. You put, you know, stress and aggravation, you're going you're to find our experience. So. Examine your, your, your examine your, your examine your priorities if you're worried more about where you're going to be in five years as opposed to where you're at today. Today, that, the, fun. Car, Carson kind of hit on a big thing there. Like, like pro, peerage should be a byproduct of what you enjoy in the SCA. Yeah, you, you're but, not. You don't become a knight. You are a knight. You are not. Yeah, knight, yeah. Not elevated. Yeah, and it's the same for everything. Like, like if you're doing the art, if you're doing the service, peerage should be should be. That's the key word here. Peerage should be a byproduct of what you enjoy in the SCA. Yeah, you know, sometimes we fail as that. You know, we fail as an order. We fail as as crowns. But if you're if you're fucking putting in the work, if you're doing the job. You know that should be fucking recognized. It, it should be a byproduct of what we do in love. Yeah, like uh, like what Effin has said. Uh, what was it? Don't play for the cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, next question. What's that? So Evan comes up with some smart th- smart things sometimes. Oh, don't Martin tell him that he's gonna think he's. He's gonna, he's gonna, it's, it's really gonna, only like once in like a year, and that's it. <laughs> he's like, a, he's like Silent Bob. Just once a movie, he has one smart thing to say. That's it. <laughs> well, I mean, it took him until November of this year to get something in, so. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Oh, okay. Enough picking on the tech guy. Um, let's see, Sir Carson. How do you deal with burnout from the SCA? Do you ever get burnout? Uh, when haven't I been burned out? I mean, you can't do this for thirty years without experiencing it. Um, <clears throat> you can get, you can push forward through it, but you know, um, it's going to happen. You, you just mm-hmm. got to. Re-examine while you're doing it. You know, if it's not fun anymore, don't do it. Find something else and enjoy the experience. Um, you're tired of fighting? Go pick up archery. You're tired of archery? Go pick up scribal arts. There's a lot to learn in the SCA if you just, you know, don't have preconceived notions about what the SCA is going to be. Let the let you know the SCA has got way too many hobbies involved in it. You ever to get bored with what you're doing? Just do something different and. With new experiences comes new joys, and then burnout disappears. Um, it may be a while before I go back and do the things I was doing before if I'm burned out from, from them, but I've got all these other activities I can do in the meantime. Pick up stained glass. That can be fun. I, I don't have the patience for it, but somebody does. Sure. Um, there's lots to do. Or just don't get burned out, one of the two. <laughs> just, just, just don't get burned out. Plain and simple. <laughs> um, you know, I can only speak from my experience because everybody's different. Uh, you know, it's very cliche to say this, but like, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, right? Um, that's kind of the SCA. You know, if you love what you do, you'll never experience the burnout. Unfortunately, you know, the the portion of burnout that most people feel is the exterior shit and the exterior pressures from other people. It's not that they're not doing what they love. It's just they start feeling pressures from exterior sources. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that, you know, that we're buying into other people's bullshit um, and not doing 
truly what we love. Um, because I, I do feel within the SCA, and I feel that cliche is very true. If you uh, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's true in the SCA. If you're doing what you love, you'll never experience that burnout. But you've got to kind of navigate the fucking rough waters of what other people expect of you and, you know, the other pressures that people put on you and stuff like that. It's, it's a hard road. It's a very hard road. But, you know, I, I, I also feel that like, you know, if you feel that, that pressure mounting on you, take a break. SCA is going to be here. Fuck, we've been here for 50 something years. We're not going anywhere. That's you know, it, 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 it's, it's, people, point. Uh, it's, you know. You start having expectations, you're going to start having disappointments. And that's when you start getting frustrated. Stop having expectations about what's going on. Just experience it. Just do the do. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, James, have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome? Mm -hmm. uh, man, I would like to say that I have. but. And how do you get it out of your head? Uh, how do you get out of your own head to take a step to take the next step in your path man imposter syndrome is so weird because like uh, so i've been a night shit for more than a decade and i still kind of giggle when people say like hey you know hey sir james i'm like yeah that's me they said sir like that's fucking me um I don't feel like I fulfill the role of Duke very well. I don't feel like I fulfill the role of Pelican very well. I don't feel like I fulfill the role of Nighthood very well. It's something I, I constantly fucking struggle with. Um, you know, but I, imposter syndrome, you know, it's, it's um, I think that is the basis for humility. At least it should be. And, and it's, it, it's my toughest thing, man. I, I struggle with it all the time. I don't feel like I'm worthy of any accolade I've ever gotten in SCA because I get so much precedence or power, you know, perceived power, I guess, um, from having these fucking titles. So I, I don't really know how to answer that. I don't, I don't know that I've ever passed. Um, I don't know that I've ever figured out an answer for fucking imposter syndrome because um, I still feel like a dude that fights pretty okay and does things that he loves um, and tries to fucking help people along and fails at it constantly, you know? Um, so I, d I don't know that I have an answer for imposter syndrome. It's, it's a real factor. I think it should be a real factor. I think it's what keeps us honest. Um, and I don't know how to tell people to get past it. Yeah, um, I think anybody who says they 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 know how to deal with it is lying. Yeah, um, I've dealt with it my entire SCA career. I've been surrounded by some really amazingly talented fighters growing up in the SCA, and I've never, in my opinion, lived up to them. I and when I was successful in fighting, it was because I had a unique style, had a gimmick that people didn't know how to beat or had trouble beating, I should say. Um, so I've never. I've never fully accepted that I deserve the accolade. Um, then to make things even worse, I had a stroke. Um, so the, in the recovery of, of, from that, uh, I've had to you know, face a lot of questions about whether or not I, I, I still emulate the night that I thought I would be. Uh, those were sobering thoughts to have. And still not sure I've come to the term, you know, come to terms with them yet, but working on it every day. But I have decided that there are other things I can do to help bolster the fact that I'm not on the field every day at every event, every fighting, which is you, know, you kind of wanted to be a knight so that you could be a, on the field with the rest of the fighters. And it's been very difficult for me to do that in recovery. But you get through it. You know. Enough people. Enough people call me that I'm starting to believe it again. So I guess there's that. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're recognized as a knight, and people are still recognizing me as a knight, so I guess I'm still a knight. Um, it's difficult from time to time, though. Okay. So what do you do to provide examples of how to be a peer for others to look up to and emulate? 
Well, see, I here in Glen Aubin, I think we are are, are blessed with um, a lot of people to point out to as examples. Okay. Um, James is incredible at living in the moment, at at, at, at pulling people into his into his circle and providing entertainment and fun for them. Um, we have other people in our group. There are um, we used to have other people in our group that were, you know, stalwart paladin types that were running around just you know doing epic crap all the time. So we have I've had plenty of examples to point out to other people. The easiest one to find at every single event, though, is that one guy grabbing an ice chest out the back of somebody's car and holding it down the hill so that some you know, older lady doesn't have to do it herself or some you know, helping somebody set up their pavilion. Those are the peer-like qualities that are overlooked on a day-to-day -day basis. They're the easiest to point out and you know, see constantly. I like it. All right, James. Um, Carson kind of nailed it, man. Like I, I, I try to emulate um, all the things I would want to see in a peer. You know, if, if there's a moment that, like, you know, I, I so there's a saying I have, and I, and I preach this constantly: never turn down the chance to be a hero. And I try to do that at every event that I go to. Like I see opportunities, like you know what, and and, and it could be the smallest thing. You know, carrying a chair for somebody, moving a cooler, helping somebody with their tent. Um, little actions build uh, big karma. Um, and that's what I try to do. You know, I, just, I, I try to be a decent fucking human. I, I would hope that others do the same. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's so simple. It's just the actions are so fucking simple. And. People don't realize it. The little things that make such huge impacts in the SCA, carrying somebody's basket, um, telling somebody that you think that they're pretty, you know, like that you appreciate their garb, that you appreciate the effort that they put in, um, that you like their shoes, um, a song that they sang that meant something to you. Um, you know, there's there's so many opportunities that we have. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard to nail down that one thing, but just, you know, it all comes down to, again, and I say it a lot, just being decent, decent people, you know, that's what it comes down to. All right. I think I'm definitely going to take that and I'm going to start telling a lot more people that they're pretty. And I'm going to start with Ethan. Ethan, I think your beard looks extra pretty today. I wish everybody could see it, but it looks super pretty today. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Aw. Gee, glitter is, is what makes it for me. <laughs> oh, I should get into the habit of that. Oh, let's see. Uh, my wonderful lady wife asks, uh, do you dabble in any arts and sciences outside of armor working? I do everything. I am a garb whore. I have like five fucking armor kits. I love looking pretty. Um, I do calligraphy. I make a whole bunch of okay. shit. I uh, I tackle everything the SCA has to offer. Um, I think it's very important. It gives me an outlet uh, outside of fighting. I have a very samurai view of things that you need a little peace to calm down the rage. Um, but yeah, I think it's important for everything. Everybody to tackle every facet of the SCA. Um, I got. Honestly, for me, I got tired of people talking about how goddamn good looking Duke Cameron was, and I wanted to be that guy, right? <laughs> so everybody was like, "Oh, Duke Cameron's fucking garb is amazing." So I I learned how to make garb. Uh, thank you, Count Ray, for teaching me how to fucking sew and do stuff. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of things. All right, what about you, Sir Carson? What do you do? Um. I started off in the SCA back in the late 80s, early 90s. And back then, there were maybe four vendors at events that you could buy stuff from. So I learned to be pretty self-sufficient and started off making armor because, you know, without the armor, you're not going to get on the field. Of course. 
you know, so I, I, I've been making armor for 30 years now. Um, at some point, uh, Sir Elazar of Northumbria made fun of this, the tunic I was fighting in and told me I needed to start dressing better. And I took it to heart and kind of became a clothes horse and um, learned to sew. Um, sewed myself and my wife at the time, Scarb, and didn't do a good job about it, but, you know, I got to I got on the field looking better every time, and I got to an event looking better every time, and had more and more guards show, show up. One more in the same two every, every event, and since then I've learned to make yeah you know, I've learned card waning, which is you know shoes making shoes, um, okay, also casting, armoring, garb. Um, Don't let Carson fool you. He's a fashion icon in our kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. Talented friends that um, that are willing to help me out where my skills fall short. I'll I'll acknowledge that. He is one of the prettiest Garby dolls we have. Yeah, I'm just waiting for camera. <laughs> Garby <laughs> dolls. <laughs> Would you say uh, possibly in the running for prettiest man in Glen Aubin? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, <laughs> Duke James. <laughs> oh, maybe Duke James. Uh, yeah. I hold my own. <laughs> new, uh, new, uh, new, new contest there for for Glen Aubin, prettiest man in Glen Aubin. Mm -hmm. Running. Oh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, how important of a role do you feel knights and peers have in encouraging the children and teens of the SCA? <laughs> well, this is. I will answer this question in, in <laughs> two phases, just because, you know, why do it simply? Um, the obvious answer, in my opinion, is we have no more, no larger role than anybody else. Our job is just as important to every other person at an event to taking care of the children and teens and, and, and installing values in them. That being said, um, I think there's an added responsibility added to our shoulders wearing the chain and the belt. We accepted that when we took our oaths that we need to stand up a little taller, a little stronger, and be the person that need that the, somebody needs us to be. Um, as James and I were talking earlier, we're in species, we're on staff now. That is our job um, to provide for others. And if the peers don't do it, who else is going to? We have to set the stage, set the stage, set the standards. And without the children and the teens coming up, the SCA, despite what James says, the SCA will go away if we don't keep bringing new younger people into it. So take that with a pound of sugar or a pinch of salt, whatever works. But we need to do whatever we can to nurture participation and growth from every aspect of our, of our groups. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, I mean, Carson's right. It's a snowball effect, right? Like we should, uh, everything should roll from the top down. Um, you know, sometimes you forget the importance of what role you have, even, even among the children, you know, when uh, a kid gets to fight somebody, you know, if, if they get to go home and be like, Oh, I fought Duke so-and-so I fought sir so-and-so, you know, it means a lot to them. And, you know, we should, we should always strive to be the heroes that uh, we get to be because of the minute shit that we do. Um, yeah. You know, so it's, uh, I think it's very important that we encourage the youth. I think it's very important that we encourage the teens, you know, if, if and yeah, we, I mean, Carson's right. We die on the vine without them. Right. You know, the new generation at see, and we're about to, we're about to hit a point where we're going to see like fourth and fifth and sixth generation skatians. Like, how fucking cool is that, man? You know, like, you know, like, when we get to see, like, you know, a king ruling a kingdom who's, like, the great, great, great grandson of somebody. And if you could have a small portion of keeping that person in SCA, I think that adds to your legacy, too. You know, it's, um, at the end of the day, that's all we have is our legacy, right? Like, you know, when people pass away or people move on, it's very rare that they talk about, fighting prowess or anything like that it's like their character you know that gets spoken about yeah. i think having a, a strong sense of character and a strong sense of being um 
means a lot more than how good you swing a stick. So if you can impress that on, on, on a younger person, um, I think that means the world, you know? Uh, somebody actually made a comment uh, when you were talking about having younger knights out there uh, in the world. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to butcher the name. Uh, Holmes Zipser, Zipser uh, said, I think having younger knights encourages younger people to be knightly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent on that? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, if you, so, so we look at it, peer groups, right? Like if, if I'm a young guy entering the SCA, if I'm a young dude that comes in the SCA, um, say I'm a 22 year old and I look around and I see the average age of nights being a bunch of 45 or 50 year old fucks, I'm not going to give a shit because I think I've got time to fuck off. You know, that is not my peer group. However, if I walk into the SCA as a young 22-year-old and there's a bunch of 25 and 26-year-old knights, I think I have a shot at this. That's something I want to be a fucking part of. You know, I think it's super important that we make younger knights. I think it's super important that we that we recognize that young people can put an effort into the SCA that is just as important as somebody that has played for 30 years and maybe fucked off for their first 20. You know, if somebody comes into the SCA, you know, gung-ho, super enthusiastic, builds up, you know, the people around them, fights really good, and is a shepherd to the society, knight that dude, knight that lady, fucking knight them. You know, don't wait on that. That's a golden opportunity missed if we, if, if we don't. All righty. Let's see. Let's, uh, what, okay, let's see. Um, I think we've got some, I think we've got enough time for a few more questions. What are we thinking, Effin? Oh, I kind of like this one. Oh, I, yeah, I really do like this one. How can you push a fighter to be the peer you see in them without pushing too hard and coming off as a dick? Uh, well, <laughs> that's tough. Um, you know, I think it comes down to communication, <laughs> just like anything in the CA. It just comes down to communication. I think you have to ask that person, like, hey, what do you want out of society? What do you want? What do you want from me as a teacher? What do you want from me as a, you know, mentor? Um, I think it's really important that we have the hard conversations. We kind of skate around that. We, we, we tout this, uh, this belief that we're all family, but we're not willing, really willing to have the hard conversations with people. Um, I think if you have faith and trust and belief in somebody that you you should be able to say, Hey man, I want to have a, this hard conversation with you. And then you, you enter into that relationship. You know, not everybody's going to be ready for it. Not everybody's going to be prepared for it. I had a squire one time that was, you know, I was, I was trying to push them to that point. I was trying to get her to that edge. And I'm like, hey, we're going to have a lot of truth today. We're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, we're going to have a come to Jesus. We're going to fight. And uh, I'm going to tell you a lot of shit um, while we're fighting. And we're going to go through this. And at the end of the day, she's like, I think I'm done with the truth for today, sir. Um, so, you know, it's it's that's a hard thing, you know, not everybody's going to be the same. Not everybody's going to have the same road. Not everybody's going to have the same path. Not everybody's going to have the same fortitude, but we should have the willingness to have open conversations and have the hard conversations with people. Um, if we're going to preach that we're all family and that we all love each other and that we're all in this together. All right. So I don't know how to take this question. I feel a little called out. That was my squire that asked it. <laughs> um, that being said, um, I'm not a, not sure I'm of the opinion that I would push someone to have that to, to become the my knight or the peer I see in them. The SCA is what you make of it. Um, if you, what you want to make of it is you want to become a peer, then we've had that conversation. I know that about you, and I, uh, then I, at that point, then I can push you towards it. But you have to be willing to hear it. Otherwise, you know, I am just being a dick because 
why push someone to become a peer if they don't want to become a peer? The the SCA is is a game for whatever. Not everybody in the SCA needs to become a peer. The SCA is still fun without being a peer. Um, if that's not what you want out of the out of the game, then that's not my place to force that upon you. Uh, that being said, I I do see peer like qualities in Shea. So get out there and do the work, boy. Uh, I don't know. Yes, Shea. It's a it's interpersonal communication. It's, it's no it's no different here than it is in the workplace. Are you approach someone with, a, with with problems you have with their performance at, at, at the job? Um, every person needs to be a judge and, and looked at and individually. And every situation with that person needs to be you know, needs to be judged based on the merits of its own qualifications. All right. So, uh, yeah, we already did him. So, uh, what are your current goals for fighting? And uh, in the SDA in general, uh, Sir Carson? Well, like I mentioned earlier, um, I had a stroke several years back. And um, one of the complications of that was they found that I had some blockage in my heart. And I had to have a, I had to have open heart surgery. So the recovery from that has been slow and tedious and frustrating. So currently, my goals are to get back on the field on a regular basis uh, and hopefully get back to the point where I can I can train again. Um, it's frustrating going to tournaments, going to events, and seeing all my friends having fun on the on the field without being able to join them. So, personal goals: get back on the field to where I can train with people. Goals for my role in the SCA: whatever needs being done, I want to do it. Um. There's some people I want to see win crown list. You know, like my training is, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I won multiple crowns. Um, I want to see some other people win crown. You know, so if I can, if I can facilitate that, if I can help, and if, if I can have any portion in that, that's kind of my with my training. You know, being allowed to fight in crown list would be nice. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's what that's what that's what I want. I, I want to see other people win crown. I want to be to a point where I can have some input and some pride and say like, Hey man, like I helped that guy win crown. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. So just want to see some people win crown. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Well, uh, that's just about our time. So I think we're going to do uh, you know, I think we're going to stick to tradition. Um, since we've done this in just about every single, yep, there she goes, already going for it. We've done this in every single uh, show so far. This is Anora's favorite question, without a doubt. So I think we're going to go ahead and ask it. Um, uh, uh, Duke James, how prepared has the SCA made you for the zombie apocalypse? I not fucking at all. <laughs> not at all. I, am, I am fucking worthless. Like if you need a tent set up in the fucking zombie apocalypse, I'm your god. Tent ain't gonna do shit for you. I can wear armor and swing a fucking broom handle at zombies, which ain't gonna do shit. I can I can drink like a boss so that I don't give a fuck when I'm getting eaten. Um, I can grill some meat in the interim, but yeah, I am worthless in a fucking zombie apocalypse. I'm the only thing I'm good for is to hopefully, hopefully repopulate the earth. That is fucking good. <laughs> All right, so James on Earth repopulation. What about you, Sir Carson? <laughs> um. The SEA has made me very aware of how ill-prepared I am for a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I am very good at identifying the skills I need, or at least the skills I need in others around me, and just as good at recognizing that I don't have any of those skills, and I'm de very dependent upon the people around me to keep me alive. Um, hopefully my, my, my lady wife continues making garb, so otherwise I will freeze to death in the first winter. Not very prepared at all. <laughs> not 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 prepared at all. 
So everybody else was like, oh, I think I'd be okay. I, you know, I can, yeah, I can, I can probably take out some zombies pretty good. And, and they are uh, liars. They are yeah. liars. Zombies <laughs> don't call good. Zombies don't give a fuck about a headshot. And have been in the fast zombies, too, you know? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You get a flaming zombie running at some of these dukes, they would piss their pants. <laughs> flaming zombie. Uh, Carson camouflages himself well in zombie swag and guts to blend in. <laughs> what you gotta do? Uh, oh, cave paintings. You, you can do cave paintings? I could I could do some mad cave paintings. Just cave painting the shit out of it. <laughs> Did you do a cave painting of a possum? Oh, totally do a cave painting of a possum. Of a possum. Um, F and I'm not seeing it. Okay, thank you. All right, I think that's about as all the time we got. So uh, thank you so much, Sir Carson, and you know you know the wonderful, the great, the 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 amazing uh, Duke James the Holy. Um, don't forget, uh, this Thursday, 1117, we have uh, three former fat guys. Um, I don't know what other, what else do we have coming up? Do you have anything else coming up? Uh, what, what, what is that? Coffee with Cal, 12 to uh, 12 4, um, December 4th at 11 a.m. Uh, we have a road to retention December fourth at eight p.m. Central with uh, with um, Rahmut Al Taiba. Uh, we have another Ask the Night Squire edition uh, December fifth. Uh, the times to be determined. And our next uh, Ask the Night uh, will be that Monday. So thank you so much, guys, for being on the show. It was awesome uh, talking to you guys and, and picking your brains. It was actually really deep. And uh, it just just a, a, a giant wealth of knowledge. I feel so inspired to, to tell people they're pretty and, and get out there and, and do more stuff. I really do. <laughs> but um, all right. Thank you, everybody that was in the chat. Thank you, Effin, uh, our tech guy. Uh, your beard is pretty. And thank you, Nora, for helping out. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Sir Carson. Thank you, Duke James. You there guys you have a wonderful night. Night, guys. Night. Have a great one. <laughs>